What's up guys, Technobi here for Server Pro and welcome to this tutorial for installing and using Kit PvP. Kit PvP is a feature-rich plugin that adds a fun minigame to your server. Players choose from preset categories and fight against each other to earn points or reputation. To install the plugin, head over to the plugin section, select the Spigot tab and search for Kit PvP. Install a version that's compatible with your server and restart. Alternatively, you could download it from the Spigot page and upload it to your Server Pro panel. While the plugin doesn't need any other plugins to work, World Edit and World Guard are useful to define where PvP can't take place and more. For placeholders in chat, you'll need the Placeholder API plugin as well. You can see what plugins you already have installed by going to the Install tab under Plugins. If you want to learn about creating kits, abilities and more, we have a separate video on that where we go into more detail. This video will just be covering the general bits of the plugin. Link to the in-depth kits creation video in the description. With the plugin installed, there's a few things we have to do. First, we need to select a spot for kit PvP to take place. This could be an arena or an entirely different world. We'll use slash KP add spawn when we find a good place for the spawn point. Slash KP spawn would teleport you or a player to the spawn point, and it'll give you a kit selector as well as a back to hub teleporter. An arena is basically just a closed off area with a spawn point inside of it. Any area will do. We can create an arena by ourselves with a spawn area or room and players can use it basically immediately. Of course, if you chose to install World Guard and World Edit, we can define a region where PvP can and can't take place, for example, the spawn area. But before we get to PvP enabled or disabled zones, how does PvP work in arenas by default? Well, if a player tries to hit another player, they'll see an error message in chat saying they cannot hit another player as they don't have a kit. After both players have selected a kit and have one active, PvP can take place. If you define a PvP disabled area using World Edit and World Guard, then they'll have to leave the area first regardless. While in a kit PvP world, players will not be able to place or destroy blocks. Only players with op can do so, as this plugin is meant to be used on servers with multiple worlds. A player will not have an inventory when loading into the server, they'll only have a kit item and a back to hub item. Any items collected during kit PvP will be lost when the player disconnects or goes back to the hub. The plugin gets even easier for players. When players teleport or warp into the start area for kit PvP, you can place some signs that players can interact with instead of having to use the in-game GUI. They can just simply run up the signs and interact with them. Every kit PvP sign starts with kit PvP inside of square brackets, a command on the next line and a kit name on the third line for a kit sign. We can create a kit sign to give players a kit with kit PvP kit followed by a case sensitive kit name. Kit PvP Clear empties the player's inventory and disables their kit. This allows players to no longer be targeted by other Kit PvPers. Kit PvP Menu opens the GUI. Kit PvP Stats displays all your stats in the chat. Kit PvP Refill is a sign that opens an infinite chest where players can take soups that regen a few hearts instantly. Basically, you'd place some or all of these signs in your Kit PvP spawn area for players to take and use. Let's get to showing some in-game combat. I'll grab the kit from the sign on two accounts. After both players have selected kits and enter an arena, they're free to fight. Upon finishing another player, they get sent to spectator mode for a few seconds before respawning. Their death counter is incremented and so is your kill counter. The person who finished you also receives a super regen, the same one that you'd get in spawn. Upon getting a third kill, there's a big message on the screen announcing that you're on a kill streak. If commands were set up to run, they would. Let's go through some abilities. There's unique items in all of the default classes, but I'll only cover a few. The Fighter Kit has a health kit that regens health and gives a speed boost. The Archer Kit has a bow, infinite arrows, and a toggle to turn their arrows into burning arrows. The Tank Kit has a speed boost ability. The Bomber Kit has throwable TNT and a trail of TNT that they can activate for a short time. The Ninja Kit has stars that let you vanish for a short amount of time and a permanent speed boost. The Trickster Kit has eggs that swap your position with another player when you hit them, but I won't be going over how to create kits in this video as I mentioned previously. Again, a link to the in-depth kit creation video is in the description down below. Locate the config in the plugin folder. 
Stats.yml contains statistics for players on the server and is automatically maintained. Signs.yml lets you customize sign formatting. Scoreboard.yml lets you customize how the scoreboard looks. Messages.yml is where almost every text message for the plugin is. If you want to change the language or localization for the plugin, this is where you'd do it. Menu.yml and Levels.yml both contain settings and localization for the in-game menu and leveling system, respectively. Killstreaks.yml contains settings and localization for the Killstreak system. When a player starts a killstreak, the sound can be played, commands can be run, and more. Abilities.yml contains settings and localization for all of the custom abilities. The Kits folder contains kits. Again, we've covered kit creation and abilities in another video. First, let's open config.yml. At the top, we have items. These items are the default items given to players. Kits is the kit selector and leave is the leave item. We can change enable to false to not give players these items when they teleport into the kit PvP arena. Bungie Cord is for if you'd like more than one universe. You can set a world or server name under server. If you have a hub plugin, then under commands, you can add the command a player would run to return to the hub. And when the item is used, the command will be run for them. So under commands, you'd enable it and add a line, hyphen, player, colon, hub. This is of course only if the hub command takes you back to the server's hub. Otherwise, you'd put a different command in here. Around line 100 is for if you have other plugins that manage kits and use these commands listed here. You can set them to false and the plugin won't react to the commands in game. I'll set all of these to true, of course, as my server isn't running any other plugins that can manage these commands. Near line 106, we have arena settings. In here, we can define what happens to a player's inventory and more. We can clear effects on join, clear inventory on join, leave, respawn, and kit change. We can prevent hunger, item dropping, durability loss, and more. Spawn has a few settings for respawning, where we can set a respawn delay and whether they automatically respawn or not. Storage lets us use a MySQL database for storing player stats. Soups lets you config how much a soup regens and how it appears. Arenas at the very bottom is just for storage of all the existing arenas. You can edit the spawn location here, but you should really leave it to the in-game commands. Anyways, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any video suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. If you're having issues with anything, contact our support team. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!